So let's see what we have to do. This is a two-part job. We first need to make a very rough selection of the area that's going to be worked upon. Then we're going to refine that selection using the color range selection tool. Now the reason why we need to make a loose selection first is we want to leave out all of the things like walls and tables and dresses and all those sort of things completely out of the picture at this point. We only want to focus on the skin areas. By isolating it roughly, we make the selection process a lot easier when we have to use the color range selection. So enough talk, let's get to it. I'm using the polygon lasso tool for this one. So I'll just make my rough selection being reasonably careful, but not terribly so, to capture all the areas of skin that we're going to be working on later. Now, if you can keep it reasonably tight, that's fantastic. But if you can't keep it terribly tight, it's not necessarily so desperately important. Okay, so that's basic skin area there. I want to capture those fingers up there. So I've got my plus button turned on so I can add to the selection. got that and I'd like to cut out this hole down here so I'm just going to zoom in. I'm using my mouse wheel for this because I'm using Photoshop CS4. Very nice thing to be able to zoom in nice and painlessly. And I'll change my button from plus to minus so I'm going to subtract from the selection. And yes of course you can use other selection tools. As I said this is just the rough way of doing it. It'll give you quite a decent result in the end. Now I'm paying, a, one thing I am paying attention to is I'm not going to grab anything that I want to keep clean and that would be eyes, eyelashes, eyebrows, lips and nose. I want to keep those protected because I need those shadows to retain sharpness when I eventually come to use my selection for skin. So it's important to try and keep them reasonably clean. Don't cut them off when you make your selection. Okay, I'm going to press Q on my keyboard here and I'll just zoom out so I can see the entire image and yes that's not too bad so I'm now ready to go in and fine-tune this selection we go into the select menu and we choose color range but oh got to get of quick mask mode Q one more time that's better select menu color range from color range it will allow us to make an eyedropper sample to select the color tones that we want to select now the first step for this is to click on the skin tone that you'd like to select. So just click on the image itself and that will make a rough selection. This then shows you in the preview box what is currently selected and to what degree. If it's white, it's completely selected. If it's grey, partially selected. Black, not selected at all. Now we're trying to get all the skin tones, so I'd like to add to this selection. So we've got a little thing over here that looks like an eyedropper add to sample it's called. Click on it and just click and add some tones and it starts to increase the selection range. Now while you're doing this you'll see that you're starting to include areas outside. If that's the case you can use the minus eyedropters to subtract from that selection and just take away that particular shade. Go back to your plus and continue adding on to your selection area. plus, minus, plus, minus. The selection that you're going to get as a result of this is not going to be perfect, so you can try and adjust it using the fuzziness slider. Fuzziness, if you increase it, it will increase the area sensitivity. If you decrease it, it becomes much more contrasty. You want to keep the fuzziness so that at least it is soft enough to retain the difficult edges. Things like hair, for example, they're going to be very quickly ruined if you take the fuzziness down too low. So keep the fuzziness up a little bit. Don't worry if it's not a perfect selection. We're going to clean that up in a moment. Okay, I can live with this. This is enough to start with. I'll say okay. And now we have a new selection. Very important. We now need to save this. So I'll go to my select menu and choose save selection. And I'll call this skin channel and say OK. 
I can now deselect. So select, deselect. And we're ready to go further. I now need to go to my channels palette. And at this time, it's worthwhile seeing what we are trying to build. By going into channels, I'll show you that at the bottom of my channels palette, I have an already existing completed selection called skin. This is what we're shooting for. We're going to be getting this nice clean skin selection. Leave out the eyes, eyebrows, hair edges, shadows for nose, lips, etc. So that we only get the skin that we want to clean or clean or add glow effects to. So let's have a look at what we've got that we've just created. Now, that isn't too bad. It's very close, but it needs a little bit of cleaning up. And I'll show you what I mean here with the cleanup. I'll just zoom in down here. Maybe just back it off a little bit. Now you can see the selection is pretty good, but that edge there, it's all grey and messy. So we just need to clean that up. Now, best ways of cleaning this up, two methods that are worthwhile knowing. One is to make a quick selection around the area to be cleaned, like so, and then run a levels tool over this. You'll find that underneath the image adjustments levels, or just learn the, the keyboard shortcut. PC, Control L, Mac, Command L. All you need to do to clean that sort of edge up is to go to the grey point slider, drag it off towards the white, and that will get rid of the grey, that'll become black pull the white over a bit, that'll harden up the whites. If you pull the black over, it will darken up the edges. I think most often it's best just to fiddle with the uh, grey point slider, not so much with the white point at this stage. I think just the grey slider will do the job for you. And say OK. And that looks pretty clean. Yes, there are a couple little white flecks, but you can go in there when you're finished, clean it up with a paintbrush with just some black paint. That will do a perfectly adequate job. Okay, I'll deselect. Let's have a look around to see what else we can clean up. Now, the other method for cleaning is one that is a little bit unknown to a lot of people, but it's really useful. Instead of using levels to make selections, you can use a dodging and burning tool. Now, if you use the Dodge tool, you'll find it over here on your palette, Dodge tool, you can specify that you would like it to dodge highlights. That means it will lighten the highlights. Set it for an exposure around about 30 to 50% maximum. And here's what it does. When you click on something, it starts to dial down the brightness of any object that's in there. So you can use this without worrying about destroying shadows. I can click happily over a shadow and it won't destroy the shadow not straight away at any way. So you can very quickly lighten things up. I'll just bring up the uh, lightness here. Now I'm not using a big size for this because honestly you can use a big size but usually it's better just to go at this a little bit more slowly and take your time. So I will put our little film on pause while I clean this up using the dodging tool and that will lighten up all of the light edges. Oh, before I put it on pause, you'd better see the evil twin of the dodging tool. What, if, what happens if you need the opposite effect? You need to darken up some edges. Well, the opposite tool for doing that, you'll find that one over here under the dodge tool, it's called burn. Burn, you'll need to set burning to shadows. Again, set the exposure somewhere around 30 to 50%, and this will darken edges. So if I click here, you can see it's gradually darkening up those edges. I don't really want to darken up those edges, so I will get rid of them later on, but here's something I would want to darken, would be these lips, for example. Very quick and easy method for darkening up those shadows. Darkening up the eyes and the eyelashes. Okay, now I'll just put this on pause and I'll clean up the edges using my dodging and burning tools. And we're back. Now, I've mostly finished the job, but there are a couple of little pieces here that I want to just clean up so it's all ready to be used for my skin selection. And that is here. And I'll just zoom in. These areas here need some work. Lips, the shadow on the nose and the eyes. 
very simple fix. Just take a brush, set it to black paint, and just get in nice and close. Don't be afraid to get in really tight. Just go in and just mark in some black to protect those eyes. You don't want any of the eyes to be uh, compromised when you're making your skin selections and smoothing. If you're worried about is it a good enough selection, just remember you only need to get rid of the details around the eyelashes and in the eyes themselves. Everything else will be hunky-dory once you get down to the final bits of work you'll be doing on the image. Lips, get rid of it all. Lips, as you may or may not know, will generally require work all on their own. So you may already have made a very high quality lip selection that you'll use later on for maybe applying different lip colours or different glowing effects or other special effects that you might choose to throw on. But otherwise, just make sure the lips are out. You need the details that are on the lips because they have nice sharp edge detail which makes the image look more believable. Okie dokie, let's zoom out, see how we are. And that is our selection. That looks pretty good. So we're now ready to give this thing a spin. We'll give it a try. I'll go back onto my skin channel here and I'll control click on it to select it. I'll go back to the top of my channels palette, click on RGB come back to layers and I'm now going to take a copy of my existing layer and I'm going to apply a layer mask so I'll drop a layer mask onto this new layer and click on the layer mask icon there we go and let's give it a test I'll turn off the background layer and there is our selection that my friends is pretty good quality zoom in a little bit yep that is really something you should be quite satisfied with I certainly am that's more than good enough for working with a skin selection if you wanted to clean it up even more of course you can you can really get in and find detail troublesome areas particularly the edges of the arms which I'm sure a few of you are out there screaming that he didn't get the edge of the arm properly well for this sort of selection it's not terribly necessary but you can go in and just go in, clean it up, and add it in yourself with any of the other selection tools you care to use. But the difficult areas, anything with hair overlay, that's all been nailed down quite well. And that is how to make a good skin selection.